Welcome to our lecture online. So far we've talked about friction, the coefficient of friction, but now we're going to talk about the friction force. And just as the word tells you, it is indeed a force, just like any other force, so therefore it's a vector quantity, it has magnitude and direction. Now friction force is what we call a reactionary force. It reacts as a result of another force acting on an object. So friction force by itself cannot exist. It can only exist if there's another force causing the friction force. Now we can think of the friction force as a resistive force. It resists the force that causes it in the first place. Now, how do we calculate the friction force? Well, it depends whether or not we have what we call a static or a not moving situation or a kinetic a moving situation. So let's look at the static situation first. We have an object with mass m sitting on top of a surface. It's a horizontal surface. The mass of the object is 10 kilograms, and therefore there's a force of gravity acting on it, pulling down on it, which is the product of the mass times acceleration due to gravity. 10 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared is 98 newtons. In other words, the object has a weight of 98 newtons, and it's pulled towards the Earth by the force of gravity. Now there's a reactionary force of the surface pushing back with an equal and opposite force, which is called the normal force. And of course, it's going to have the same magnitude as the weight, 98 newtons. Now, there's some roughness on the surface of the object, the block, and there's some roughness on the surface of the ground. And so, as the object's trying to slide over one another, there's going to be some resistive force. That's called the friction force. Even when the object is not moving, there's still a resistance to movement, and that is also called the friction force. And it's going to be acting in the opposite direction because it's a reactionary force opposing the force that caused it in the first place. And that's why the direction of the friction force is in the opposite direction. One way to think about it is the direction of the friction force is opposite to the motion of the object if friction didn't exist. So if there was no friction, this force would pull on this block, the block would move to the right, and therefore the friction force will act in the opposite direction of the motion of the block if the friction force wasn't there. Now the magnitude of the friction force is equal to the normal force, in other words the weight of the object, times the coefficient of friction, which we have the symbol mu to represent that. And in this case, let's say that the static coefficient of friction is 0.5, then we can say that we multiply the normal force, which is the weight of the object, times the coefficient, and therefore 49 newtons would be the friction force in this case. It is the static friction force when it's not moving. Now, what happens when I pull on this object with a force of 10 newtons? Does that mean that the friction force is still 49 newtons? And the answer is no. What this means is that this is the maximum force the friction force can be, or the maximum magnitude of the friction force. This is called the maximum magnitude that the friction force can have. Here's a little table that will help us understand this. Let's say that we pull with a force of 10 newtons. The maximum force that the friction force can be is 49 newtons, but the reactionary force, the friction force, is only going to be 10 newtons. It is going to match the force by the force that caused in the first place. So if this force is 10 newtons, the friction force will be 10 newtons. Then the net force is zero, because you add this force to the right, to this force to the left, plus 10 newtons, minus 10 newtons equals zero newtons. Zero net force means zero acceleration, the block doesn't move. If I now increase the force to 20 newtons, Again, the maximum that the friction force can be is 49 newtons, but it won't be 49 newtons. Imagine if it was 49 newtons, then you'd have a force to the left of 49 newtons, a force to the right of 20 newtons, and then the net force would be 29 newtons to the left, and the block would accelerate to the left due to the friction force. Ah, that's not possible. It just means that the maximum this force can be is 49 newtons, but it will only be equal and opposite to the direction of the force that causes in the first place. If that force then increases to 30 newtons, the friction force will be 30 newtons. If the force increases to 40 newtons, the friction force will increase to 40 newtons. Keep matching. It's like Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. That's the way we think about the friction force. But finally, when the force that pulls on the block exceeds the maximum force 
that that friction force can be, now you have a net force. Now you have 50 newtons to the right and only 49 newtons to the left, and all of a sudden there's a net force and the block begins to accelerate to the right. So you can see that the friction force will always match, in a case where it's static, will always match the force that caused it in the first place until that force exceeds the maximum force that friction force can be, and now you have an acceleration. Let's say now that we have the same block, the same force of 50 newtons, but now the block is moving. So you no longer have a static coefficient of friction, you now have a kinetic coefficient of friction. And typically, the kinetic coefficient of friction is a smaller number than the static coefficient of friction. Now, when we calculate the maximum friction that you can have in a moving or kinetic case, right? so this is an instance where you have a kinetic friction, you can now see that the maximum friction that this can be is 19.6 newtons. We multiply the weight times the coefficient of friction, in this case the kinetic coefficient of friction, and the maximum force this can be is 19.6 newtons. Therefore, when it's moving, any time the force that causes it to move exceeds the maximum, 19.6 newtons, the block will have, there will be a net force acting on the block, and there will be an acceleration to the right. What will be the acceleration in this case? Well, we know that the acceleration is equal to the net force divided by the mass. In this case, the net force will be the force of 50 newtons pulling on the block to the right minus the maximum force, the kinetic friction force can be, divided by the mass of 10 kilograms. And then, of course, when we subtract that, I'm running out of room here. Let me go over here. So this is equal to 30.4 newtons divided by 10 kilograms, and you have an acceleration of 3.04 meters per second square. It's simply the net force divided by the mass. So you can see that while the block is not moving and the force is smaller than the maximum the kinetic friction force can be, the block will simply stay there. Once the force exceeds the maximum friction force, it will begin to accelerate. It then shifts from a static coefficient of friction to a kinetic coefficient of friction, which is typically lower, and therefore we can now calculate the acceleration by taking the net force, which is equal to the force that pulls on the block, minus the friction force, in this case the maximum friction force, and you divide that by the mass and you get the acceleration. So that hopefully gives you a good feel of what friction force is. It's a reactionary force, it opposes the force that caused it in the first place, and there only will be a net force between the force that causes it and the friction force if this force exceeds the maximum the friction force can be. And that's what we mean by the force of friction.